In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with the Asset Warp tool in Adobe Animate. I'm going to start the video by going over the basics of how to use the Asset Warp tool. Then I'll talk about what to expect when using it with shapes, brushes, text, uh, basic symbols, basic PNGs, and even complex drawings, symbols, and PNGs. Then I'll end the video with two kind of sample projects where I'll go over kind of what I do step by step when using the Asset Warp tool. One of them will be an ice cream animation where the ice cream drips, and the second one will be of a squid that just kind of pushes and swims up in the water. All right, so the first thing you need to know is that the Asset Warp tool is something that you apply to assets, so things that you've drawn or created that you want to be flexible. So things that you want to maybe bend or twist or obviously warp like the tool title says. Therefore, in order to actually use the asset warp tool, we first need to create an asset. So I'm just gonna go over to my brush tool, then down to properties here. Uh, I'm gonna keep it as a bright color and then shrink this down a bit to create pretty much a squiggly line. Okay, so that'll give us enough to mess around with to learn the Asset Warp tool. Next, you're gonna go over to the Asset Warp tool and click on the asset. And you'll see that now there's dots that are gonna appear on it. But now if we go back and hover over our asset, now there's a plus that's added next to the pin. So that allows us to, wherever I click, it's gonna add a pin to the asset. So I'm gonna add one there. I'm gonna add one here. I'm gonna add one over here, and that's it for now. If we also look, you'll see this mesh is added to the asset. You can turn it off by going to Properties, Object, and down to Mesh right here. So you can just click this to turn it off if you don't like it, or keep it on like that. As far as handle mode goes, I'm gonna come back to these two in just a second. So basically, you wanna add pins to any place that you want to move, or to places that you don't wanna move. So right now, this part of the line is actually moving around as I move this, because it's not pinned, right? So if I wanted that to stay still, if I wanted control over this, then I would have to add another pin right there so that when I move this, that part stays still. But the other thing you might notice is as I'm moving this, this line over here is being adjusted by Animate. It's thinking like, as I move this down, oh, he probably wants this to move up a little bit. And that's because right now we're on open. So this, all these ones, all these pins are on open. If I would change this pin, even just this one to fixed, now I'm gonna have more control over what happens over here as I move this. You notice now as I move this, this is fixed. Anything beyond it now is fixed. So it's not just gonna move willy nilly to adjust. I have control. So if I wanna move this down, and I want this to move up now, I can click on this fixed one, go to the circle that's around it, the dotted circle, and I can just rotate it to tweak it where I want it. And you can, if you switch it back, so if I'm on this one and I now switch back to open, it's gonna automatically go back to what Animate thinks is best. All right, so now let me just show you how you actually animate it. So I'm gonna go to about 30 frames, I'm gonna right click in here and add a frame to start. Then I'm gonna right click and create a classic tween. Now I can apply any keyframes that I want to be able to warp it. So I'm gonna to go to about 15, right click and put my first keyframe there and you're gonna see that it's gonna create the this little arrow there. And you're gonna see that all the pins will show up here again, which will allow me to move them to new spots at 15 frames. So I'm just gonna move this up and I'm gonna move this one kind of over a bit and then kind of move this one down. That's about it. So now if we watch this, it's gonna warp from there to there. And then at 30 frames, I'm going to just add another one and you know just tweak this up and basically make kind of a flat-ish line. And there you go, there's my animation. Boom, and it goes out to a flat line. And just so you know, because this is essentially just a regular classic tween, if I click in between any of my keyframes here, I can apply any of the same tweening effects that I would in any other case. So I can go to my effects here and change my easing to let's say, you know, ease out. You can also click on any keyframe and then go over to object and change your color effects, for example. So I can change the tint to maybe a different color. So now it'll not only will it you know, warp it, but it'll change from green to this kind of pink and then back to green on this one because I haven't changed this. So the last thing I'm gonna talk to you about in terms of basics is 
all the ways that you can kind of break your animation when you're using the asset warp tool. So let's say in here that you're like, oh, I wanna add another pin right here. If you've already animated it, right? So you've already put in the animation and you go to add another pin, you're gonna break your animation. So if I go here now, it's just gonna go from one frame here, you're gonna see the color change, but then also it's gonna jump to this one and then it's gonna jump to that one. The reason why is because this one now has one, two, three, four, five pins and these ones have four. It just doesn't work. And you can't go, well, okay, well, if that one has five, I'm just gonna add a fifth one here and then it'll recognize it. It doesn't. So just make sure you have all the pins that you need in first before you actually start to animate. The second way that you can break your warp animation is by changing your handle mode. So if I go to this one again and I go down to handle mode and I go, oh, I didn't like, so let's say I move this one. You're like, oh, I didn't like how that looked. I want more control over that. So you click on this one, and you go, I'm gonna change it from open to fixed. Boom, you change it, and now your animation is broken again. I can go in here and I can tweak it. You know, you're like, okay, good. But now if you go to watch it back, it's gonna have the same effect, that, that like stalled effect. It's gonna be here, then it's gonna glitch to that one, stall, and then glitch to this one. So don't change your handle modes either. Next, we're gonna take a look at how the Asset Warp tool works with shapes, so round ones and pointy ones, with objects you've drawn with a brush that are slightly more complex than just a straight line, and with text. So let's take a look at the circle one first, and I'm not actually gonna animate them, I'm just gonna put the dots on, put the pins on, and then just move it around a little bit so you can see what is possible, okay? So with a circle, the only real thing that you're doing with this is really deforming it. You're not really gonna create anything accurate. And if you go too far, you can see that it doesn't even allow you go to like extend completely. You can only go so far, it has its limits. And just so you get a sense of how this might be applicable, I'm gonna do a quick ice cream animation later on in the video. For the next one, for a star, so a pointy edge one, it's the exact same thing, but you can actually maneuver the star around a little bit and it still looks like a star, right? It looks like the same thing. So a little bit more control when it has kind of limbs like this which is the exact same thing for the brush here. You can like dance around, whatever. So you have a lot of control when there's defined kind of paths. For text, it's a little bit different. So if we click on text and we try and pin it, so you can see it's it won't allow us to. So I'll even zoom in there. It has the little arrow and it's crossed out. I can't pin it at all. So what you need to do is right click on your text and break it apart. So that's gonna, put it into each individual letter, and that's, that's assuming you have a word that's written out, and then you have to right click and break it apart again. And now you can see the dots are on there, but if it's one word, like this is the text word, and if I click on one letter, it's gonna apply that mesh to every single letter that was in that word, because it's all on the same layer here. So if I try and put pins here on the T, and then I'll just put a couple on the E up here, and then zoom in, if now I try and maneuver the T up here, it's going to be still connected to the E down here. You can see that if I move this, it's gonna tweak the E because they're connected. If you want each letter to be its own thing, then make each letter on its own layer so you can warp each one individually. As far as symbols go, you can treat them the same way as you do text. So you're gonna have to break them apart first. So just right click and go down to break apart. You'll see the dots. Now when you go use the Asset Warp tool and click to pin, it'll put on the mesh and you can just go from there. As far as PNGs go, if we click on that keyframe, you can see that it looks like it's the same as a symbol. You got the blue box that's around it, but if you right click and try and break it apart, you'll get this weird meshy looking thing that is just a disaster. So don't break a PNG apart. All you have to do is click on it and it'll convert it to the mesh right away, but you'll get this message as well that just keeps popping up. And as long as the PNG is like one color, like a simple thing like this, you'll have no problem, you know, warping it and messing with it just like you would anything else. Now, if you're dealing with more complex drawings, symbols, and PNGs, then the same rules don't necessarily apply. So let's take a look at these one by one. The first one here is just an image that I drew where each kind of thing that I drew, the eyes, the flippers, the tail, the whatever, is all on one layer. The next thing here, this is the symbol that I made from this drawing. And then the last one here, the third one, 
is the original PNG that I brought in to draw this thing right here. So let's see how the asset warp tool works with each of these. If I click on this first one here, I can no problem go to the asset warp tool and anything that I've drawn, you can see the little dots on it. I can click on it and the mesh will come up, no problem. But as I click more and more here, you can see that something might come up here. See, look, sometimes you run into this thing where it looks like it disappears, that not everything is part of the mesh. Then you put another dot and everything comes back, okay? So if we go back and look at this one, push play, everything works just fine. Oh, except right at the very end there, do you see this? So as it's going and then right near the end here, boom, it disappears, there's a little glitch. So be careful if you're using that one, it might work. Oh, there's already a glitch there too. So you're gonna run into a lot of problems when you have multiple colors and stuff on the same layer trying to put asset warp on it. What about symbols? Let's see what happens for a symbol. So I click on it. Remember for a symbol, I have to right click and break it apart. There's the dots. I can put in my, you know, my pins and the mesh comes up and oh, look at the same thing happened at the exact same spot. As soon as I put that pin on and then I put the last one in, this time it didn't even come back. But if I convert this to a classic tween, put my keyframe at the end here, and then just tweak a couple of these. Look, it still hasn't even come back here. So if I tweak this one, it looks like the foot there, like the, the flipper is missing, but when I release, it's gonna jump back and now all of a sudden the background is back. So it might just jump around, you might lose the back every once in a while, or you know it might not line up. Just move everything and now let's take a look at it. And oh, look, in, you can already see that a piece kind of misses from the very, very start. So same thing happened more glitching, same as this one. Okay, and then let's quickly take a look at what happens with a PNG. So I'm on the keyframe, I can just click on a PNG and it'll create, oh, that looks terrible already. I'm gonna add a couple more pins in here and PNG is really causing my computer to lag. So just be aware of that as well. It's gonna put a lot more stress on your computer. So I moved a couple of those pins and then let's go back and take a look. So right off the start, we can see that it doesn't, oh, it looks fine off the start for PNG. We watch it and the whole thing actually played fine for a PNG. So it caused a lot of stress on the computer, but it actually didn't cause any of the glitching that these other two did. So what if you have multiple assets that are on different layers and you still want to combine them into one in order to apply the asset warp tool to so you can morph it all together? Well. The first thing that I would suggest is to go over to your asset warp tool and then click on any one of the keyframes here and then go control A. And then everything that is in that's dotted has the ability to be combined. Now, right now text says it doesn't have the ability, but if I click away and then click back on text and then break it apart, same thing would be for a symbol. If you break it apart, then go back to the asset warp tool click on the keyframe and go control A again, now you can see that text is dotted, so it is combinable with the other kind of things that have dots on it. So in this case, this shape that I drew behind in yellow. Now, PNG is different. You can't, no matter what you do, you can't combine the a PNG with the other things. Because I can't, even if I break it apart here, so I break it apart, it becomes that weird symbol again and you can't combine it. So in this case, I would have to draw my own bat symbol, obviously not as good as the other one. And then now if I click on it and I go control A, everything will be selectable. And now if I click anywhere to put a pin, it'll combine them all, preparing warp shape and put them all into one mesh so that I can warp them all together if I want. And you'll see that this top layer, whatever that layer is, that's the one. So if I hide everything else, it's actually all just now on that layer together. On a side note, once I animated this one, it actually didn't have any of the same glitches that I experienced with these ones that I drew all on the same layer originally. All right, so essentially what we learned there is that if you have a complex asset, so something that has different shapes and colors to it, and you want to apply the asset warp tool to it, then you're probably better off warping each individual piece of that asset separately 
rather than trying to do it all together. One major thing to be aware of though, is that if you're gonna try and animate this guy, let's say jumping up into the air a little bit, and you go to move the body, so I go to the free transform thing here, and I go to move the body, nothing is gonna move with it. So one of the first things you wanna do if you have multiple pieces, is you wanna go over here to this like family tree looking thing here, show parenting view, which will open up this kind of column right here. And then all you're gonna do is click on each piece and drag it to the body. So there'll be this little line and boom, now that one's parented to the body. And you just do that for everything else that is supposed to be attached to the body. So for me, it's everything here. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and go to about 30 frames and add frames right there. Make all of these classic tween, change these to a keyframe. And now when I move the body, so if I click over here on the body and I move the body up, everything is gonna go with it. I'm actually gonna put it even higher, like he's jumping way off of the screen here. And then I just have to go back to my other assets, go back to the warp tool here, cause I already have the pins on. So I'd probably put the, you know, the jumping part probably like right here. So I'd put two new keyframes, one for each leg. And then at this point, I would already kind of make the legs straightened out like this, cause then you'd, you'd be pushing to jump right there. So about like that, I'd probably have to go back to these ones and you know tweak them as well. So they're straight down, so they don't bend back up. And this is gonna look really odd, but you'll see that it'll just be the little push with his legs up and he'll just jump up into the air. All right, so for the last little bit of this tutorial, I'm just gonna walk you through two simple little projects that I made. One is an ice cream cone thing where the ice cream drips. And another one is the squid one where the squid kind of swims up into the air a little bit. Okay, so a couple simple projects that I'll show you how I did them using the Asset Warp tool. So for this one, you can see that I've already animated the left drip, which is on its own layer, the right drip, which is on its own layer, and then we're gonna do the middle one here in the video, okay? So I'm gonna click on the keyframe here. I'm gonna go over to my brush tool, go to my properties, and I'm gonna pick the same color that I had for these other ones, and I'm just gonna crank the size all the way up, and then just click and you can see, I kind of judge this circle, you can see it adjusting there. So I made it so that the full size, this full 200 is gonna be what I want. So I'm gonna click in the middle, just down a bit right there. So there's the, fills out the rest of my cone. And then just to make it a little bit easier, I'm just gonna hide the left drip and the right drip so we can focus just on this middle one. I'm gonna go over to the asset warp tool and I'm gonna pin to the left here, pin to the right, pin maybe up in the middle here and then two here, and then one at the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna put a lot of dots in because I wanna make sure that this whole area stays kind of structurally sound, and the only thing that's dripping is kind of the middle part right here, okay? Then I'm gonna click in the middle here, right click, go create classic tween, go to the end and make a keyframe. So this is just gonna be a straight drip down. And so on this keyframe, the only one I'm gonna move is this one for now, and I'm gonna drip this one a lot further than the outside two, okay? And that just doesn't look good. The reason why I put these two in the middle is so I can kind of bring it in like this and kind of bring it in like that so that the the drip is, you know, more just straight down the middle. I'm gonna have to bring that back just a touch right there. And then now when I go to look at it, drips in, that does not look good, okay? So I'm gonna go back to it, maybe bring this one down a bit, bring this one down a bit, and I want this to drip even more, okay? So those ones were kind of too high up. It didn't allow for the, enough of a drip, okay? So that looks a lot better, okay? So there's the, the drip that I wanted. And you can see as it drips down, it's gonna narrow in a bit. But once we put these other two in, you won't notice that as much, okay? So if I play it, they're both, they're all just kind of dripping down, okay? The next one is this squid one. Now, the squid one is a lot more complicated. So you can see I have each of these layers parented to the squid. Uh, my bubbles are all in their own thing over here. And if we actually double click on squid, you can see it's got its own project where each kind of eye, um, you know, mouth and everything is parented to the body as well over here. So it's a slightly complex project that each piece is seemingly is on its own layer. But if we look back at this one, it looks like the squid is just one thing, but it's not. Okay, so what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna deal with just one of these arms. So this left one here, I'm just gonna add a new layer above it. And I'm gonna go to the first keyframe 
and I'm just gonna draw out that leg, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my properties, change my fill to that color this time, and then I'm just gonna adjust the size here so it's kinda the same size as the tip of the arm over here. Now, I'm just going to draw it straight. I'm not gonna draw it curved like this to start. I think it's better if you draw it straight and then use the asset warp tool to curve it afterwards. So I'm gonna start way out here, just kind of draw it into the body there, make it a little bit thicker at the body and taper it out at the end. Whoa, that's way too thick. Then I'm gonna go over to my asset warp tool and put one at the end, one over here, and then kind of make two kind of elbows. So like this elbow and like that one up there. Now, before I add the classic tween and actually start moving it, I'm gonna go over here to layer two, which is my left two. And I'm just gonna click within my parenting here and I'm gonna click and drag and parent it to the squid as well. So now it's kind of the same as the left arm here. And then I'm just gonna hide the left arm. So now it's gone. So I just, this is now my left arm. And then now I can click on here, right click, classic tween it. And then I'm gonna go to the very first one here and I'm just gonna try and make it look like on this first keyframe, I'm gonna try and make it look like this one, okay? So I'm gonna bring this down like that. Then this one goes up a bit and this kind of curves like that. It's a little bit bigger than the other one. I would take more time to make sure that it's not larger than the other arm, um, but we're trying to go fast here. Okay, then I'm gonna, oh, it's not bad. And then I'm gonna go over here and match it up with the right one. Another keyframe is right there. And I'm just gonna match it up here. So now it's the arms going up a little bit. This definitely came up and this was up just a bit right there. Okay, so it's getting ready. The squid's moving its arms up, getting ready to push down to swim up, okay? So then this next keyframe is where the push down starts to happen. So I'm gonna bring this down, this down. I'm not gonna bring this one completely down because it's fighting against the water. It's gonna be a little more, little more resistance right there. So I'm gonna have it curved up, whoops, curved up just a little bit on that side. So now when we watch, it brings its arm up and then starts to push down. And then this one way over here, this keyframe is the end of the push. So now I have to bring this down, this down, and this down. And it kind of matches with this side. It kind of curves. So it's pushing the water down here so it can go up. And then the very final one is starting to bring the arms back up again. So another keyframe here and just starting a little bit to bring these keyframes or keyframes to bring his arm, you know, his tentacle or whatever back up to push again. Now, when we watch it, it just brings it up, pushes and slides up. And you can see that I already did my asset warping to this and this as well. So that they kind of bend as the water pushes, they kind of bend away to show a little bit more momentum. And that's it. That's all I got for the asset warp tool in Adobe Animate. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.